Hello, everyone, and welcome to Catholic Truth Living, where we talk all about life, relationships, marriage, family, and living, struggles, problems, relationships, the real thing, you know, hashtag life is real, and life is hard sometimes. And many people go through struggles. Many people lose faith in God. Many people gain faith in God through by being put through the crucible. <laughs> and many of us go through different reactions, you know, up and down, depending on life circumstances. And many of us have been really challenged in life. And today uh, we have a wonderful guest, Nancy McNally, and she's going to be sharing her crucible, the story that she's gone through that has only made her stronger. And we put these videos up for your inspiration. So that if you're struggling, if you're going through someone, or if you know someone who is on this particular topic, you know, you can share it with them because there's many people, you, you might not need it. But there are many people out there who, who are struggling or who have lost faith in God or who you just need to send this video to and say, hey, you know, you can't, you know, have kids or you're struggling with fertility or you're struggling with trusting God or whatever it is. Send them this video, you know, give them that gift of inspiration. Uh, so anyway, without further blabbing, uh, Nancy, I want to welcome you to the show. Thank you for having me, Brian. Um, I so appreciate it and feel blessed to be here. I'll start uh, with marriage because that's where the foundation is. And uh, right before um, I met Stephen, my husband, um, I wasn't sure he was the one for me. And then um, there are so many stories for me of God speaking to me and, and letting me know this is the right way to go. So after a little bit of a uh, time together, um, Nancy, we if went you wouldn't apart. mind, if you wouldn't mind, yep. can you give like a two minute overview of everything and then we'll back up and unpack it you know can you get, kind of give the skeletal nutshell just to kind of let people know what it's going to be about okay sure so my faith journey starts with um marriage to my husband uh some struggles with his faith um and it uh then um after we uh, were married and we went down the road of um, him not going to church, not receiving the sacrament. So that was many obstacles. Um, then we found our way together. We found, um, he found the sacraments, he found his way and together we were united in our faith. Soon after that, we, as many people think, we'll, we'll have a family. That is what we're meant to be as, um, faith filled couple married, uh, we should procreate. So we never doubted that that was the road we would go down. All my siblings have children. So a um, couple years later, not working, we, you know, went to our, you know, infertility specialist. And then um, we quickly discovered that the rosary was the way for us to go. And we, we uh, knew that this, we fell to our knees. We knew that something had to change we were doubting, we were angry, we were sad, we were grieving. Um, and that was a point which I can remember in our bedroom, kneeling in front of our bureau with our rosaries, first experience with the rosary. We said, we'll say a three month um, novena. We just came up with three months and we felt the end of this. I think that that'll, that'll do it. That'll happen. So um, again, after three months, no pregnancy and uh, we continued. And that was the question we had was where do we go from here do we stay with our anger with our sadness with our grief or do we go towards god and we absolutely we we took each other's hand we we walked the walk we struggled with it uh we talked to our priests but through the storm 20 uh 23 years later we still have our moments where we grieve it and, and that's as our maternal instinct but we are uh, we have united together in that cross of infertility um and we are so much stronger we are uh we are faith filled we say yes to god although we are not perfect every day is a is a new day we wake up and say god use us how do you use us um uh another major life we we'll say crisis was um 3 years ago i was diagnosed with breast cancer um 12 years before that, my twin sister was diagnosed with breast cancer and my father was diagnosed with lung cancer. So all in that time period, you know, you again, fall to your knees. What do you do? You you ask God, what do we do now? What is this about? How can we grow from this? 
So my twin sister, that is when we started to, I prayed for her. Um, she prayed for me. My father passed away, but I knew, and I know now, um, there was a purpose for that, uh, for that struggle, for that cross for him. And I've never doubted that. Um, so wow. I get, sounds like you've gone through an array of <laughs> different, different challenges in your life. Um, that's wonderful. And I think many people can relate to that. You know, I think many people have marital problems and struggles, especially women complaining about husbands, but sometimes vice versa too, lack of faith, um, you know, cancer, death, dying. I think we all have struggled with that in our family. So if you wouldn't mind, maybe you can back up and just talk briefly about, you know, the struggle with your husband and, you know, why he wasn't faith filled, how that affected you and how it, it kind of came through that. So we met at uh, D'Angelo's. We we're both working there. And this is the quick story. He was um, he was opposite uh, every, in every way. He was uh, long red hair, uh, a rock, you know, lead singer of a rock band, um, singing, boisterous. And um, I am and still am an introvert, quiet, reserved, um, a little bit of a perfectionist. So although, you know, we went on one date and um, I said, Ooh, no, that's not going to work. So we went off on our separate ways uh, a little while later. There was a phone call. I worked at a different D'Angelo's. Happened to be him looking for someone else. I just, I knew, and my that was, you know, and you could say chance. I it was not chance. That was he was looking for his friend. Had no idea I was still at D'Angelo's. We reconnected. He had changed a little bit. He had matured, and there's something in my heart and my brain that said, "I'm marrying this man." Like this, this was it. So I, I felt like. You know, the courtship was was quick. It was beautiful. But he was he was baptized, but not had received no other sacraments. And I just thought, well, that'll fall into place, you know, and it didn't. I would go to church every Sunday by myself. I would cry. I would say, God, is this is this where I'm going? Are we going? I want to marry him, but I can't. I need you know, faith is so important to me. I can't go to church every day and sit by myself. So months and months of crying on my knees asking God, is is he for me? Um, we ended up, we decided to get married and he he had this, you know, it wasn't the most beautiful conversion story, but it was a conversion story. He, I want to get married in the church. I was a devout Catholic and he committed and he became, I, I wouldn't say that he received First Holy Communion. He was confirmed so that we could get married in the church. And he, not overnight, but he, he was standing up for his faith and he just became this, this changed man, nothing perfect, but it was, I said, that was a, thank you, God. Like this, this is beautiful. We had our moments, but this was so, um, he was still drinking and smoking and I still, okay, God, this is, we're imperfect. And this is, you know, I don't like it. I, I, I would come home and he would be over here. I'd be over here. He's drinking and smoking and not, doing what I would say is, is what God's called us to do. And I, I'm quiet about it. Like, I don't, I don't go on a soapbox. I just say, I go my way or I quietly say, you know, I wish you wouldn't do that. So I'm very, you know, it's very reserved and I, and I pray. Um, he, he explains the moment I, he, he knows the day and the moment and the hour that, um, he gave up drinking and smoking. He said it was in his heart and, um, he needed no, the next day he didn't want to smoke. He didn't want to drink. And that to me was absolutely, that was a miracle, a small to your prayer. Quiet miracle. Absolutely. And I, and I say, God, th like, thank you. If I ever say, where is God? Like God has shown himself in so many ways, some quiet ways, but some, this was a pretty loud way. Um, now, let me ask you, how long did that take from the beginning of your marriage or, you know, relationship till this point? How many years? It wasn't, it, to me, it felt like forever, but it was probably. It was probably a year or less than a year, but in the when you're in it every day, you're thinking, "Is this my life? Is this when I have the battle?" So it seemed like forever, but I don't. It was probably about a year. But you're blessed because I think most people, you know, have sometimes have these stories. A lot of times, people don't change. <laughs> That's the reality. It's scary to trust, but it seems like you knew this was from God, which is why you went into it. But 
many people just get into the relationships out of convenience or out of fear that they won't find anyone else. And they get into these relationships, just hoping people are changed or missionary dating, you know, oh, I'll make them change. They'll change for me. And then they sadly, they spend countless years in marriage miserable. But, you know, it sounds like you knew this was from God and you prayed your heart out night and day. You cried your heart out night and day. And, you know, it just somehow you knew that God was going to see it through. And, it, and that's a great, that's amazing. And, and you kind of needed it because based on for what everything you were going to go through, you know, you needed that soulmate there for you. That That is the key. And I, and you look back and you, and you say, wow, when I, I start, when I prepare it, I look back and I said that that was absolutely it. Like we had to unite uh, in order for us to go through the infertility in order for us to go through cancer and, and all the other pieces. So absolutely. God, perfect plan. God knows, God knows what we need. And, and, uh, he, you know, not what we, I want something, but he gives us what we need. Amen. It's so funny. Cause I always thought like, Oh, I want a blonde hair, blue eyed, you know, soccer playing woman, you know, like fit, blah, blah, blah. And I ended up getting a short brown haired artist, animator woman, <laughs> totally different. You know, it's like what I want probably wouldn't have made me happy. What I needed is what God gave me. And, you know, she's obviously still beautiful and just different than what I would have liked. You know, some people only pigeonhole what they want, which is why they usually are single most of their life. You know, we just have to be open to what God wants. And sometimes it's a little outside of the box of what we would normally go for. So you two are together. You're happy. You're living your faith. He's praying more. And then all of a sudden, catastrophe strikes and you're you're really striving to have kids and you can't. And I know that's a cross for both men and women, especially for women. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that. Um, unbearable at times, uh, uh, sadness that you can't comprehend, unfairness, why me, um, even, you know, jealousy, looking at other, you know, there's a lot of looking at the world and saying, why can that person who's not a very nice person have kids? Why can that celebrity have 18 kids and a nanny and not, you know, so you stop pointing and saying, not even why follow God, me? right? Like we're faith filled. We're good people. We're not perfect. So it all was, you know, what have we done wrong? And um, Steve has said that often, like we, we must have done something wrong. That was originally mm -hmm. it. And I said, you know, no, I don't. That's not it. But I was questioning and I saw my siblings all have children. Um, which gave me the privilege of being a, an aunt. But I said, well, all right, when's my turn? And I I orchestrated my life around kids. I would pick a job because I'm like, all right, I know God's, we'll have kids eventually. So I'll, I'm going to take this job. So every the more I orchestrated my life around, maybe I'll be pregnant here. Maybe the, you know, the less it worked out because God was gently, you know, nudging me to like, let go of that, like let go and stay on your knees. And we have been on our knees since then. You know, literally and figuratively, we, you know, we pray the rosary, I think for the past five years, every night we haven't missed a night. And um, it doesn't mean that there aren't moments. My maternal instinct and heart hurts sometimes. How long um, ago were you married? If you don't mind me asking. Um, we're on 22 years. Okay. And when did you find out that you were infertile? Like how far into marriage? I'm guessing uh, within, you weren't trying for kids right away. Within the five at the five year mark, because we did get married a little later in life, which is why we we're a little more mature. But I think it was within five years we said, "Okay, let's go see our doctors." We both had surgery. We both we did the natural family planning. We're like, "Up, oh, this is what God asked us to do." So we said for sure, like if we do this, this is gonna work. And then I, this is how I know God put us together for so many reasons. I as my my instinct was. And my, you know, friends were saying, well, go get treat, go, go get infertility treatments, go get, you know, whether it's a, the test tube, like a pushing and you should do that. And I, right. And part of me was like thinking about it because I just wanted to have that fulfilled. And Steve was without waiver. Nope. That is not what God wants. And wow. if it wasn't but someone else or anyone else who just said, all right, honey, if that's what you think we should do. I would have done it because I was in a moment of desperation. And I look back and I'm like, he held firm and he still holds firm in so many parts. That's why we're such a great fit is that he can really hold firm in some ways when I'm like going to bend a little bit. And I absolutely, because my, you know, my, even my sisters, you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you take these pills? Why don't you? And 
uh, you know, in a little, and Steve would be saying, nope, Nancy, this is, God is, is, this is not the way God wants it to be. That's not natural. So that, that to me, when I, I smile when I think of it, because um, I would have gone, I would have gone that other route because you, you can't explain what your, you know, maternal instinct is and how desperately you want to hold mm. that baby. A hundred percent. And we just did a video. Actually, I think the video before this one was our, uh, we did a video on IVF and um, in vitro fertilization. And the lady just knocked it out of the park. She was so good. She knew everything about it. And she talked about just how it destroys women, family, marriages, and everything else unknowingly. I mean, people get into this for good reasons. They're they're desperate or they're trying or, well, God wants us to be open to life. So that maybe this is just another way to be open to life, you know? And we come up with all these things, but it's actually very much against God. And so I thought that was a very good thing. And I'm really glad that she, you know, talked about it. And I'm glad that you didn't get into it. It is the worldly view of, you know, you deserve or you should, or this is what God made the doctors who made the test. And it just gets so crazy. <laughs> yes. You got to stop and come back to what, you know, what God has asked us. And you need that partner, that person, that preacher, that spiritual director who, who can ground you. And that for me, it was Stephen and my mom, my, my mom for sure, um, is my, my spiritual guidance, um, which I should mention is, that, you know, you find that person who, um, who really kind of sets you on the path when you're going, because you're, you're sad, you're desperate, you're overwhelmed. Yeah, no doubt. And how long have you guys struggled with infertility? Like, till you ke- how long did you struggle with it before you came to the decision, like, we're probably never going to have kids, you know, and you came to that realization? It It is up and down there. Are, I would have to say, certainly the, the grace has built over time, um, where in the beginning, I I could go to mass and I and Steve could look over and I, I'm just like in tears because there's a baby up in the front row and I'm just like I, trying to hold it together. Um I still cry. I still, you know, there there'll never I don't think there'll be a time where I won't say, Wow, I wonder what your plan was, God. But I am so much more at peace and trusting and knowing that this is our path and God has a special plan for us. And um so do I still cry? Absolutely. Do I still can I still look at a baby and say, God, I wonder what that would feel like to give birth and hmm. and are there occasional questions of of why you gave us a womb? Like why am I not using it? But then I come right back to would we be the prayerful people we are? Would we be united as husband and wife? Would we say the rosary every day? Would we say the divine mercy every day? No, because I'd be wrapped up in 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 a baby or children. And um, and I know that because whatever I do, I give 120 percent. And, you know, and and my mom has said that also, like because I come from a family of five and um, I've always thought I would have that many kids. So she you know, always say, would you be where you are now? Would you be that prayer warrior? Would you? No. And God is great. And that is, uh, and that is amazing. So yeah. Um, just and would you get to help so many people like you are now and you're going to, no, you probably wouldn't, but how did you get to that place? Like if someone out there is struggling, you know, and they're in the darks or in their air in the depths, you know, how did you get from point A to point B? I know you started praying the rosary, but was that all you did or did you just kind of like make your life a prayer or kind of like, jump on the leg of Jesus and hug with all your might, you know, just try to just throw up on him all the time. It was, it was that, it was that, it was, it was fine. It was uniting with Steven and knowing we're in this together um, because we had, you know, not blaming each other, not. And so there was number one was uniting. Number two was pouring my heart out for sure in the beginning daily um, and just saying, what do I do with this? Like, this is grief that I'm not sure I can overcome. How do I go to work when I see kids every day? How, so it absolutely was, it was pouring out. It was being able to cry. It was, it was going to confession. And I don't even know what I confessed. And it was like, cause I didn't know what feelings I was having. I said, was it, is it jealousy? But I would just like kind of pour out to my priest in in, in those moments of like, I don't, I'm not sure if this is good for confession, but you're sitting here. So I'm just going to say everything that's on my heart 
And because I do feel angry sometimes. So I let that was confession. I do feel jealous of. So that was so healing for me was confession. Um, and and finding that other part, my like my mom or finding a spiritual guidance, someone that you trust, someone who can look objectively at it and say, yes, that, you know, you're on the right path or this is what you need to do. And um, yeah, so it was just pouring our, our hearts out and, and letting let ourselves. Say, yeah. Let me just say, hold that thought if you don't mind me, because I think that's an important point you made that, you know, having someone there for you is a big thing. Cause a lot of people may be struggling with this, but maybe having a tough time in their marriage, actually it's oftentimes can be a marriage ender because as you said, you end up blaming people and you end up just getting angry and fighting with each other. You take out your, your anger and your fear and your hurts on each other and it actually hurts the marriage. And so, you know, maybe you have some advice for that, but maybe, you know, I think it's important for people to find someone, even if they can't talk to their husband or wife at that time, I think they're needs to be a spiritual director. I think there needs to be a spiritual, someone that they trust, a parent, a priest, a nun, a friend who's really close to God, just someone who can be there for them to get them through. Because we can't do this alone. The devil will just wreak havoc on our psyche. He will lie to us. He will tell us we're not good enough. He'll tell us everything in the book that we'll just, we already kind of believe because we're in that state, which is why it's important to have people around. I went to my, and I've, we've been so blessed with so many priests and I wrote down all the priest names who God put in our lives. And the priest we have now, I emailed five years ago and I saw that email because I'm going to go back to, it. I said, who, who do you recommend for spiritual guidance? And he gave me, you know, Vermont doesn't have a plethora, but they have, he gave me three. Um, and I still have those because I haven't gone back, but I think I'm ready for that next level. And so Yes, finding that trusted priest who can then guide you to um, a lay person or another priest or someone who can really guide you on that path and, and you can trust because we're starting to read the Psalms every night. And that was that was a recommendation from our oh, priest. So you need someone to say, good. yeah, yeah, it was what, what can we do? I we we can't read the whole Bible. We're tired. But what he said, well, read one Psalm a night. And if you if you're not too tired, read it twice. And try, and that's what we've done. And and amazingly, we haven't read the Bible a lot, you know, which is so important. And, and now it's now we're being called to to do that, which is a lot of it is being open and listening. I'm not I've never been a good listener. I'm very hmm. go, go, go. So if I can say advice like slow down, every, you know, and just take a second to listen to how God is speaking to you, because God speaks to us in so many different ways. And that is a lesson I'm learning every day. Yeah. And if you're struggling in life, just in general with a lot of things, anything, read the Psalms. I mean, when I've gone through my darkest moments, black moments away from God, the Psalms have been lifesavers, life rafts, you know, like literally because they speak the words that you can't when you're pouring out your grief, when you just don't have words to say because you're in such a dark place. They say they have the words for you and half of them are suffering too. D King David suffering or someone else suffering and pouring out their souls to God. So you can relate to them. But what I like about the Psalms is they always end, always end on positive notes, hoping in God, trusting in God. And that's the necessary ingredient that we need to not fall into despair, to not fall away. You know, we need to keep that hope and that trust. And I think the Psalms are great for doing that. And it's, and it's because, because the Bible honestly is overwhelming. I think sometimes, where do I start? How do I, and the Psalms are, you know, they're just long enough where you, and you can understand it and you can read it together. And so that was, has been, um, you know, great for Stephen and I. Great. So <clears throat> where are you guys at now? <clears throat> Excuse me, having allergies, but where are you guys at now? And, you know, do you have any advice for anybody? Well, we're, it's, it is the reflection and it's our, so how do we grow stronger and what's our next step? And part of what we just said was the Psalms. The next part is, um, is spiritual direction for each one of us. I know that I'm called for myself. I'm not sure. We started as a couple. Um, and then we've decided that even though we're united, we we're both on different, also on different journeys. So it's okay. Um, I'm going to pursue my own spiritual direction because we're individual people. 
we're united on many things, but that is my next step. And at night, besides the rosary and the divine mercy and the Psalms, um, you know, we, and mass and, and determining like what, how is God using us? And that is a question that we're able to ask. And, and Steve has done a nice job and he says, God, give us a, a thirst for you. And I said, all right, wow, that's, I like that because we're not thirsty enough for God. And we're starting to get thirsty because we want to read the Psalms and like, what's, what's our next, you know, what is our next job, Lord, to become the people you made us to be? And we are just right now, it's just open us up, mold us, Lord, and shape us. Transform is a word we keep using together, like transform us. Our jobs are so tough right now, and we'll come home, and we have a couple moments where we let ourselves vent as human beings, because, and whether we're angry, whatever it is, and then we come back and we're like, all right, God, what was that about? Like, how can we bring you into our daily jobs, which we've been in Vermont and we both had struggles, uh, great struggles with our, um, with our jobs. And right now that's where we're at. We're, all right, God, help us to, to be Christ to people, no matter what happens in our daily jobs, because we are, you know, we have to be in the moment. Um, and that is our quest because we're so good at looking at 10 years down the road or five years, or at, we're bad at being in the moment and sitting mm -hmm. and very bad. Mm -hmm. I'm very much like, What's my next goal? I, I'm a competitor. I'm a, you know, I'm an athlete. Um, you know, all right. And I'm learning very slowly. And even at 53, Nancy, just sit and listen and look at the people around you and how can you be Christ to them? And that's harder than you think. But when you go home and what I've realized is that I, God is saying, call me into every moment of the day. Don't leave me at the doorstep. Don't leave me. Don't even leave me in the car. Because for many years, I've said the rosary on the way. I leave them in the car and I go to work and I do. And then I come back and I'm like, whoo, that now I'm very much like I can see myself like when I'm having trouble. I'm like, all right, God, what was that about? Uh, help me to be patient. So yeah, you're that's kind of right both now. trying to be transformed. I think you're at a place right now where most people should be and need to be, but never get to. And that's being in the present moment with God. That's where we find God is in the present moment, in the silence. It's like we're, we're, I was a sports person too. Every sport, achieve goals. Even now I like to achieve goals. I, I like to know what I need to do and just do it. And yep. sometimes we don't realize that the most important goal, really the only goal that's necessary on this earth is to have the deepest relationship with God and to have that intimate union with him which only comes through sitting in silence, only comes with shutting up and sitting still, only comes with learning to still our thoughts and just sit and be in his presence. Let him love you and you love him. Just be with him. And many of us just can't stop to be. But once you do, then you're achieving the ultimate goal of life when that's that intimacy, that union with God, which is really what heaven is for eternity. And I do, I will add, because I'm a visual, concrete person, so I always have my miraculous medal on. Um, and I wear it at work as just a silent, like, hey, this is who I am. And then I have, I usually have rosaries in my pocket on one side, and I have a very small crucifix on the other, so that in my moments, in my most difficult moments, my hands might be in my pockets, right, looking for that, oh, that peace, or reminding me that I, you know, what am I supposed to be doing and saying, so... You know, when I say recommendations, sometimes if you're if you need that visual, it's what can you wear? What can you have in your pocket? What can you have? Uh, you know, I have a sacred heart on my dashboard as well. So that, you know, again, as I leave and come, I'm I'm looking at Jesus. And, you know, that's again, visuals are helpful for me. Yeah. People have always said you can tell what a person loves and gives their devotion to just by walking into their living room, you know, and seeing what's on the walls. You know, like, is Jesus there at all? Or is it just, you know, rock concert band posters? Or is it just, you know, other things? You know, or is, is Jesus somewhere in your house? Is he hanging in the bathroom? Is he hanging in your room? You know, yeah, we can have other things too, but Christ needs to be present, you know, all around us in some way. And they're just little reminders. I have obviously a crucifix over my bathroom mirror. So every time I'm brushing my teeth, guess who I see? And it recalls my mind, I should be praying, you know? So <laughs> I just say, you know, a little prayer while I'm brushing my teeth or, you know, going to the bathroom or whatever. I just remember Christ. And 
The more you can do that throughout the day, the better. You know, that's what the saints did. They kept themselves in the presence of God. And I know you know all this. I'm just telling everybody else, just in case anyone doesn't know. But the saints lived in the presence of God. That's what made them saints. That's our goal. Our goal, and Jesus said, actually, the, the curse and the road to destruction is getting bogged down with too many things in life. It's this parable of the sower. One of the things is that we get uh, bent out of shape because of all the, the worries of life, the stresses of life, the work, the this, the that, that we get so caught up into that that it overwhelms us and stifles us. We don't even feel like praying. We don't have time to pray. We don't have a relationship with God. You don't. If you don't have a relationship with God, then you don't have God. And you're perhaps not on the way to heaven. But we're making this during Lent, you know? So this is what we think about during Lent, you know, where is our relationship? Am I too overwhelmed with worldly things? How can I recalibrate, you know, to make more room in my life for God? That sort of thing. And we work on that through Lent. And that's for me too. I'm busier than too many, like most people. And that's not a good thing sometimes. And I have to stop moving. I have to stop talking. I have to stop doing. I have to stop working. And I have to stop doing all of that and just take more silent time. And in fact, I have a great book recommendation for everyone. It's called The Power of Silence. Read it during Lent. It'll change your life. If you watch this video outside of Lent, it'll still change your life. It is a bomb. It's a modern classic, probably one of the best. Well, it's going to be hailed as a, a classic for the last 200 years, 300 years. It's just an amazing book that we all need because we are literally dying. And we don't even know it. And this is the solution to that death. So anyway, I'm blabbing. Uh, <laughs> see, I want to thank you for coming on and sharing your story. I want to thank you for um, being open and vulnerable and sharing your wisdom that you've learned um, and the place that you've got to, the peace that you found, the joy that you found. And even though you're not perfect, you never will be because this isn't heaven. You know, so you are going to have those moments. We all are. But the fact that you have so much peace, joy, uh, goodness that you, you you have that, you know, your life on track. This is good news. This is goals, you know, hashtag goals for people who are seeking, looking, striving, maybe not in that place yet. And uh, maybe like, oh, I need more peace or I need more joy. And you know, I instead of like, Pah. so, you know, yeah. thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And for all of you out there, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have any struggles, feel free to email us in the comment section below or in the link in the description section below. Uh, we also have another video on this channel on uh, infertility uh, by a lady who's writing a book on the subject with lots of different families. Everyone who's struggling with infertility, Catholics, she's putting all their stories in there because you're not alone. And she's going to let you know you're not alone. She's going to give you so much help and support that you need. And she's writing a great book. So if you want to check out that, um, it's an interview that we have already done. Um, anyways, God bless you all. Um, if you would like to follow us on social media, check it out in the description section below. And if you would like to support our uh, ministry, which is so needed, we only exist because of you. Please see our Patreon and our PayPal in the description section below. You can support us one time, yearly uh, or monthly. So everything you do goes back to the salvation of souls and helping people to live the life that God has called us to live. So thank you all and God bless. Hi everyone, my name is Kate. I'm the video editor here at Catholic Truth. And I just wanted to say on behalf of all of us, thank you so much for taking some time to watch our videos and learn more about your faith. You guys really make this channel possible and we truly appreciate you being here. So thanks again and God bless.